In the government's latest response... You must stay at home. Master of the house, doling out the charm. It's very important that everyone... Know that you are, you are not alone. Hi. So, um, welcome to uh, our physics lesson, or physics video, the production and propagation of electromagnetic waves. I, I sound a bit like, oh, and it's not because I'm down, it's just because uh, I just finished recording a video about Maxwell's equations, and it blew my mind. So, here we go. Um, our learning goal in this lesson is to be able to explain the propagation of and production of electromagnetic waves with reference to Maxwell's equations. So we're just sort of clarifying those ideas. It's kind of a part two, um, but we're clarifying those ideas. Um, here's Hedy Lamarr. Hedy Lamarr uses the ideas that come from, I mean, there's very little um, of modern day physics or electromagnetic anything um, that doesn't look at, that if it leans on the classical electromagnetism, that doesn't look at um, James Clark Maxwell, Clark Maxwell as this, you know, bedrock, this foundation. So, here's your vocabulary. If I could just get you to pause the video here, hit subscribe and like, all that sort of um, stuff, and write these down. These are the definitions, the words um, that you'll need to have in your bank. So you want these to refer to as we move throughout the lesson. So, production and propagate, propagation, right? Now, if we have an accelerating charge, now accelerating means changing direction, speeding up, slowing down, changing direction, okay? So, if we move a charge back and forth, all right, um, we're going to produce an oscillating electric field, which will then produce an oscillating magnetic field. Um, these travel together at the speed of light, and again, in phase. And we've seen this previously. We have a change in electric field. We start here, which induces a magnetic field, which in, is a change in magnetic field. So that will induce a change in that magnetic field, which will then induce an electric field, um, which is then a change in electric field, which will then induce, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. So, the production. So if we look at the Ampere Maxwell equation, I actually liked it in the last video, I did that one second, because um, it feels that that's where it makes the most sense. But... In this context, we'll, we'll do it first, right? And that's because we're talking about a change in electric field. And that is this number right here. All right, so that's the flux. So if we change this, right, that means this is a non-zero value. So we've produced a magnetic field. And that then results in a change down here, which means this is a non-zero number, and so forth and so on, right? And we see it. The... You know, the wave goes here. It's a transverse wave. Might be the first time I've mentioned that in this um, whole set of videos. Is a transverse wave. So, the more energy a particle has, and think of this in temperature, right? So, yeah, this is fun. All right. So, the more energy a particle has, the more heat it gives off, right? And that heat is infrared light. And that's over here. Okay. So, what we have is EMF. No, so what we have is um, electromagnetic spectrum radiation, electromagnetic radiation coming off um, because of heat. And the reason is as heat, as a particle heats up, it the, the little protons in it um, vibrate up and down. And the more energy they have, the faster they vibrate. Okay, um, so faster it vibrates, the higher the frequency. And this brings us back to the um, combination of speed of light com um, equations rearranged a little bit, or speed of a wave equations rearranged a little bit, and the um, Planck-Einstein equations, where we've got the energy of a photon, so how much it's able to oscillate, multiplied by the um, Planck's constant, multiplied by speed of light, divided by the wavelength, gives us the energy. So we can rearrange that. So the more energetic a photon is, the higher, um, the more energetic it is, the shorter the wavelength. The less energy it is, the 
longer the wavelength. And that makes sense because the more energetic something is, the faster it's vibrating, which means it's vibrating faster. So the wavelength in between these oscillations doesn't have a chance to, if it's moving out this way at one speed, it doesn't have a chance to go as far. It's Whereas if it's, because it's still moving out this way at the one speed. So if it's oscillating slowly, your wavelength gets bigger as it does this. Whereas if it's oscillating really fast, as it moves out, it's just to there before it's done its full thing, its full amplitude back and forward. So, energy of a photon um, is inversely proportional to the wavelength. And we see that, right? Like, everything's giving off infrared energy, um, and that's over here. So, uh, therefore, uh, the speed of a wave is equal to frequency, or not, is it, it's easy to frequency multiplied by wavelength. Therefore, the frequency is proportional. Oh, actually, well, that's not right, right? So, energy does this. Now, that wavelength, as it goes out, as it's oscillating because of energy, um, if it's a short wavelength, but it's moving at the one speed, it's going to move past a point. More waves will move past a point every second if the wavelength is shorter because the velocity is not changing. So it's all interrelated, and that's that's cool as. So let's have a look at this, right? So here's our model. Um, we have a particle that is right here. We can see that the um, energy is moving in this direction. So if we oscillate it, so if we oscillate it between these two points, we can see that the wave starts to do this, and it maxes out here. Um, and this brings us, by the way, ignore the classical theory, because We'll get to the um, catastrophe later on. But that brings us to one of my favorite graphs in the whole world, and that's the black body radiation graph. Now, a black body is just a, a body that um, does not reflect light. It only emits light. And we can see that there's this great relationship. It's a cool graph, too. It's a fairly... Um, it's a non-intuitive graph because the line itself represents measurements on both axes at these temperatures 3000 kelvin 4000 kelvin so it's not so that's kind of cool right like it's not like a standard graph where um a measurement here relates to a measurement here it's like we measure these two we we get something at this temperature and we look at um the you know how much it's it's pumping out at each wavelength and there we go right so if something is cool it pumps out just red, infrared, right? So then it gets a bit hotter and it starts to pump out, still pumping out all the invisible light, but it's pumping out because it's got more energy, the red light. And then we see things, not infrared, but red. And we see things starting to glow red. Um, but as they get hotter and hotter, for example, this uh, 4,000 Kelvin, you'll see that, yes, it's still pumping out all the invisible light and it's still pumping out... Um, the red, but it's also pumping out some orange and yellow and a little bit of green. But that orange and yellow means we've gone from a red hot to a yellow hot. And then when we get up to, say, 5,000 Kelvin, really hot for a black body, we see that we're pumping out all of the spectrums, like all the invisible light and some invisible light on the other side. Um, but we'll see that we're pumping out basically the full visible rainbow, which is why things which are ultra hot become white hot. And that's the black body radio, um, the black body energy diagram. I love this graph so much. Okay, so so we've talked about the production and the propagation, why it happens and how it's all related. Now look at the shape of electromagnetic waves. So we're back to the um, the equations which describe a cosine wave. Okay, and describes two of them. And those are deriva derived, derivated, those are derived from the equations, uh, sorry, from the Maxwell equations. Um, and so his equations were able to show that there are two perpendicular waves in phase uh, propagating away from the source of the, um, what's the word, of the oscillations. Okay, so that's cool. And then we get to the speed. So he was able to derive the speed of electromagnetic waves using um, this part of it. Velocity equals the electric field magnitude divided by the magnetic field magnitude, which then becomes 1 over the square root of the permittivity, uh, 
permittivity of free space and permeability of free space, which then tidies up at about 2.998 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. So that is the specific reference of the Maxwell equations into each aspect of the electromagnetic waves. Now again, you're not expected to derive these equations yourself. You are expected to be able to see this is what the equations show and this is why. And I hope that helped. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as quick as we can. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time. Bye now.